Hi everyone, this is Dr. Mamta Java, clinical microbiologist and in this video module, I'm going to talk about the disease monkeypox, which has been declared as a global health emergency by the World Health Organization on 23rd July 2022. So guys, this disease monkeypox is caused by a virus, namely the monkeypox virus. Now all the pox viruses are DNA viruses and hence monkeypox virus also is a DNA virus and just like all the DNA viruses have got double stranded DNA as their genome, the exception being parvovirus, this virus that is the monkeypox virus also has got double stranded uh, DNA as its genome and it's an enveloped virus. Alright, it belongs to the family pox viridae and genus orthopox virus. Now the other important members of the genus orthopox virus include the cowpox virus, the vaccinia virus and variola virus. Now guys, the disease monkeypox caused by the monkeypox virus is a zoonotic disease. In general, when we talk about zoonotic diseases, we say that these diseases are not transmissible from one person to another and the transmission only takes place from animals to humans. An important exception to this is pneumonic plague which is an example of a zoonotic disease which can be transmitted from one person to another. Likewise, monkeypox disease also is an example of a viral zoonotic disease which can be transmitted from a symptomatic individual to another healthy individual. So in that sense, it is really an exceptional zoonotic disease. Now. The World Health Organization has declared this disease as a global health emergency precisely because of the increase in the number of cases of this disease from non-endemic areas. Now guys, talking about the clades of the monkeypox virus, there are two important clades, the Central African clade also known as the Congo Basin clade and the Western African clade. Now C4 Congo, Congo Basin clade and C4 Central African clade, C also stands for cunning. So remember this clade is the cunning one of the two. That is, this clade is responsible for more severe disease and also is believed to be more transmissible. And both of these clades have been found in the geographical region of Cameroon. Now guys, all those organisms which cause zoonotic diseases in humans have got an animal reservoir. That is, they have got a residential area in the animals and coming in contact with these animals or animal products leads to human disease. Now, if we talk about monkey pox disease caused by the monkey pox virus, because this disease is a zoonotic disease, it's important to know the reservoir of this virus. Unfortunately, how at all, how exactly this virus is maintained in nature is not known and the exact animal reservoir also is not known. But this virus is known to infect a lot of uh, rodents, for instance, uh, the dormice, the Gambian pouch rats, tree squirrels, rope squirrels and non-human primates like monkeys and coming in contact with all these infected animals can lead to human disease. Now guys, this virus, the monkeypox virus has been named as monkeypox virus because the disease monkeypox was first identified in the captive African monkeys. And the very first case of human disease by this virus happened in the year 1970 in the Democratic Republic of Congo in a nine month old boy. And since then, several cases of the disease monkeypox from that geographical region have taken place. Since 1970, human cases of monkeypox have been reported from all these 11 countries. All of them are African countries. Now guys, coming to the modes of transmission of this virus, Human beings can get infected with this virus if they happen to come in contact with the blood or body fluids of the infected animal or the cutaneous lesions or the mucosal lesions of the infected animals. In fact, in, in Africa, this disease is prevalent as I said previously in a number of, uh, in a variety of rodents like dormice, gamian pouch rats, tree squirrels, rat squirrels, non-human primates like monkeys but as I mentioned the exact reservoir is not known although rodents seem to be the most likely reservoir. So coming in contact with any of these you know infected animals especially in the geographical region of Africa can lead to transmission of the virus to human beings. In fact eating the meat of the infected animals can also lead to transmission of infection to humans or for that matter coming in contact with any kind of animal product. So guys, this is how this virus is transmitted from animals to humans. Hence, the disease is referred to as a zoonotic disease. 
Now imagine some human being is infected with this virus. Now that infected human being can also lead to transmission of the the virus to somebody else, some other healthy individual in the following situations. If there is close contact with the respiratory secretions of the infected individual, if there is contact with the articles or the fomites used by the patients which might be harboring the virus, coming in contact with the skin lesions of the infected individuals and also transmission by respiratory droplets becomes an important mode of transmission in people who are living close together in close vicinity with the infected individuals like family members, healthcare workers or other close contacts of the infected individual. Also, unfortunately, this virus has also been found to cross placenta and hence transplacental transmission has been documented which can lead to congenital monkeypox. And that's not all guys, apart from congenital monkeypox, it has been found that this virus could also be acquired during close contact during birth or after that. Even though close physical contact is an important risk factor in acquisition of this virus, still we don't know yet whether sexual transmission plays an important role in transmission or not. Now guys, coming to the disease monkeypox, the incubation period is usually found to be from 6 to 13 days but can range anywhere between 5 to 21 days. After this incubation period, the patient starts to develop the disease in two phases. The initial phase is the prodromal phase where the virus is invading the body and this invasion leads to the following signs and symptoms. The patient is going to have high fever, intense headache, backache, myalgias, very very importantly lymphadenopathy, especially submandibular, sublingual and cervical lymphadenopathy. And this lymphadenopathy is an important feature, a distinctive feature which actually differentiates uh, this disease, monkeypox, from other similar diseases, for instance, chickenpox, measles, and smallpox. Also, the patient is going to have extreme physical exhaustion that is intense asthenia. After this prodromal period or the invasion period, the patient begins to develop a rash. The skin rash usually appears within one to three days of fever, and this rash tends to be more concentrated on the face and the extremities rather than on the trunk. About 90% of the individuals have got a facial rash. 75% of individuals have got a rash on palms and soles. Oral mucosal rash is seen in 70% of the cases. Genital rash is seen in 30% of the cases. And conjunctival rash in 20% of the cases. Now guys, the rash sequentially evolves from macule to papule to vesicle to pustule and finally scab formation occurs and these scabs eventually dry up and fall off. The number of skin lesions could vary from a few skin lesions to several thousands of skin lesions and sometimes intensely large areas of skin could be involved which could coalesce together and that involved part of the skin could just slough off. Unless and until the person is immunocompromised, the outcome is usually good. Now guys, the case fatality rate of this disease has been found to be 0 to 11% with a higher case fatality rate in children. And in recent times, the case fatality rate has been found to be 3 to 6%. Now guys, the clinical differential diagnosis for monkeypox includes the following. Firstly, smallpox, then chickenpox, measles, bacterial skin infections, scabies, syphilis or medication associated allergies. Now during the prodromal phase of monkeypox, lymphadenopathy occurs which is an important distinguishing feature of this disease from chickenpox or smallpox. Now guys coming to the lab diagnosis of monkeypox, the best method to diagnose is polymerase chain reaction because of its high sensitivity and accuracy. The appropriate samples which can be collected include those from the skin lesions. For instance, the roof and the fluid from the, vesicular, from the vesicular lesions could be collected or the sample could be collected from pustules or dry crusts. Wherever feasible, biopsy can also be taken. Now the lesion samples, that is the samples collect, collected from these lesions should be kept in a sterile dry tube which should not have the viral transport medium and the tube should be kept cold. PCR of blood sample of the patient is usually not going to give us any much information because the duration of viremia in this disease is very short. And as far as serological tests like antibody detection or antigen detection are concerned, they are also not of that much of use 
because of the cross reactivity amongst the different kinds of orthopox viruses also guys if somebody has taken vaccination recently such as vaccinia virus based vaccination for smallpox that could also lead to a false positive result in serological test so guys coming to the treatment part of monkey pox it's very very important to maintain hydration of the patient and maintain good nutritional status if at all the skin lesions become secondarily infected with bacteria such secondary bacterial infections should be treated as far as antiviral therapy is concerned we do have an antiviral drug namely ticoverimat which was used for smallpox and has been licensed for use against monkeypox in the year 2022 by the european Me medicines agency but it is yet to be widely available now coming to the preventive aspects if you see an individual who has a rash which does look like that of monkeypox do not come in close contact with such an individual do not touch the skin lesions do not use uh, any utensils or uh, beddings or clothings used by the individual wash your hands often with soap and water if soap and water are not available you can use an alcohol based sanitizer in central and west africa it's very very important to keep your safe distance from the animals rodents being the potential reservoirs of this uh, organism also avoid sick and dead animals and any kind of animal if somebody is sick with monkey pox that person should isolate himself or herself stay in a separate area in the home away from the other people at home and also pets now guys as far as vaccination is concerned several observational studies have shown that vaccination with small pox confers 85% protection against monkey pox and hence monkey pox disease is going to be milder in such individuals however at present the first generation vaccines for smallpox are not available for the general population a new vaccine for monkey pox virus has been licensed for use in the year 2019 and this vaccine contains a modified or attenuated strain of the vaccinia virus and the name of this strain is ankara virus this vaccine is a two dose vaccine but its availability is limited i hope you like this video If so please share it with your friends seniors and juniors please support my work by subscribing to this channel and smashing the bell icon for notification for my future videos you can also follow me on instagram facebook and telegram the links for all the social media handles i'm going to post in the description for this video thank you study well and god bless